to begin. And I think we're going to have a pretty special one ahead of us right now because this is the first semi-final of the Polywog Cup. We have Mr. Buzz and Piney on the left side and we have Basti and King Dans on the right side. With me I have my excellent co-caster Crazy and I think this is going to be one hell of a good match ahead of us today. It's worth pointing out that the person that is your main caster is currently ranked 4 on the ladder so he actually knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I've been doing pretty well on the ladder myself lately, dude. I've uh, I've been grinding. Look at Piney's <laughs> monuments, by the way. These shiny silver green devils. They're pretty cool. I like those. <laughs> but let's have a quick chat about the Legion spells. We can see that there's a Pulverizer on the table. There's Embargo. There is Protector as well. So there's kind of two pretty nice buff spells. And then there's that Embargo, which is a little bit of an aggressive slash economy spell as well. So kind of nice mix there on the Legion spells. With that Pulverizer, I'm really looking for units like King Dan's Nightmare, which I think is fantastic with Pulverizer. But Basti has the Avenger, and that is pretty incredible with Pulverizer as well. Also worth pointing out uh, that every player picked Greed. I mean, it's it's not too uncommon to see, but we can see every player picking Greed, which is expected, but no, one's, no one feels the need to go for YOLO or no one thinks that there's a unit that is strong enough to lock in that it's worth to like concede a little bit of bonus income. Um, yeah, exactly. And, yeah, and also regarding the, the Legion spells, we can see like a purely defensive spell. There is no such thing as loan or allowance. So um, an 11 play is totally up uh, on the table. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we do have a double snail send to start things off from Piney and Mr. Buzz. Dan's holds it easily. I think there is a low percent chance for the Oathbreaker to leak this. And it all yes, depends it on how the Oathbreaker bounces. So if Basti gets unlucky, he can leak as much as 50%. But I think the expected think even... scenario is that he just holds. I think it's even above 50%, and yeah, he, he totally can hold, and he most likely should hold, but if you're unlucky, you can leak up to, I think it's Yeah, this, this one just looks like a hold, though. 29 HP left, it wasn't even close. Worth mentioning, by the way, that Piney, he actually opened with the Green Devil, so not only does he have eight of them staring at his lane, he now has one in the middle of it as well. Yeah, I think that he initially rolled Green Devil just because of his statues, you know? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. totally what happened there. <laughs> um, we could see Basti playing really aggressively. I mean, he started with five workers he held. He places down his Infiltrator. Um, and I think he's, he's set up for another push. Like, uh, with the next send he'll get, he might as well push one or two workers, because um, his both units and his split especially really do work uh, well at the moment. So... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward um, to how Basti can accelerate the snail he got um, with a unit that is as good as the Yoth Breaker if you can manage it properly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm kind of wondering whether a snail reshen should have been gone there against Basti, but it looks like he would have just easily held that actually, so probably a good call there from Piney not to resend. I'm always tempted myself if I see an Oath Breaker start to go for the snail onto regardless, just because it, like, obviously it depends what they add to go with it, but if they do something like Oathbreaker Aqua, it can absolutely destroy them if you snail onto. Yeah, that's true, but generally, since they do start uh, five workers anyways, they'll have around uh, 80 gold to spend, and if they have a remotely good unit, which is a warg or an infiltrator for that matter... Yeah, um, then it's just food, instantly. right? Then you've just given, yeah. them, given them even more of an edge. It's also worth pointing out that Mr. Buzz is pushing heavily. Like he pushed up to five workers, no six workers last wave already. And yeah. So yeah. And he should be able to hold this lizard resend as well because he does have the small aqua there to take some of the flak from the big one. And it looks like that's just going to be more food for his fire, really. Now Basti and King Dan's there lagging slightly behind with King just now getting his sixth worker. But this might even end up being a leak here. Let's have a look at King Dan's is Daphne. Is he able to hold this? No, no, he, he totally should not be, but I mean, he's clearing out the Frogos. Yeah, so just a Lizard League. Yes. Yeah, it's just a Lizard League. Ooh, very close, actually. Very... Oh, no, they no, kill each other at the same time! <laughs> that's... I mean, that's a King Dance hold right there for you, everyone. So yeah, yeah. It's very impressive, but we can see uh, everyone pushing up to seven workers, except for Basti. He's yeah. stuck with placing another wild from versus uh, four and five and whatever is to come, so that's not a deal. Kind of ballsy for Mr. Boz to be on second workers, by the way, because Basti can brute him here if he wants to. 
or no, not quite. He's just like one second short of being able to brute, which I think would have got a decent leak. King, no, he did he's... send a snail at the very last second. I'm not entirely sure why. I think Piney's pretty decent here. I have a buzz uh, snail against King Dance snail. as well. I, th I think that King prepped uh, and sent the snail for the income for next wave, or like for five, so he can add a Zeus if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but then think, why no, would he not just send a King up though in that case? Yeah, that's also true. You're right, that's a rather weird one. Yeah, maybe he thought that Piney was going to full greed or something, but no, he's just an easily holding there, seven workers, not being punished. And now King just has that little bit less pressure than he would have had otherwise. Yeah, that's true. Um, but on the other hand, we can see that, that for Piney it didn't really matter, since he, he couldn't push anyways. He, he placed down his Grawl uh, to prep for wave 6, so even though like King lacks pressure in the regards to that he can't send as much next time, yeah. it didn't really matter since Piney couldn't push off of it. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Now we've got the Dino checks coming out from Piney and Basti. Let's see if these are able to get any leaks. Basti, I'm I'm fairly certain with his value and his good positioning, because look at this, the Pilgrim is tanking the boss and the boss only. That's pretty much perfect for him. So this should be an easy hold for Mr. Basti. And if we just check the Dino in Mr. Buzz's lane, he's doing pretty well as well. I think both players just hold their Dinos, which is, again, free push or at least a reduction of pressure. Yeah. And they're quite a big one at that, since everyone pushed up that hard early, um, not leaking here, or in Mr. Buzz's case, leaking small here. Ooh, I think does he kill the dino? Right? I oh, think no, he, no, kills he, kills he kills it. He kills, he kills it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, uh, holding that sense, which are meant to check their, like, value, their place value versus their, their uh, workers, um, that's we're bound to get a, a rather pushy game, since, I mean, we can see nine workers by wave six by Basti, which is... That's pretty it's... cool, honestly. Yeah, that is a nice, aggressive push there from Mr. Basti. I love to see that. Absolutely love to see that. But the question is, what he utilize, uh, what he utilizes it for? Since he's sending into a rope wave and a fire and elemental, and he mm -hmm. needs to send rather soon after pushing up to nine workers. So are we looking at a seven or eight send against an aqua combo? I mean, at some point he's going to have to send just because he needs to be able to pay for those workers that he's bought. So he can't just sit on that Mythium forever without getting the income he needs from it. Um, and meanwhile, Mr. Buzz, he's actually putting a lot of pressure on King Dan's here. If we look at his Mythium, 152 Mythium saved up already. King Dan's is not amazing on Wave 7. I think if Mr. Buzz can afford a Mimic, which it looks like he does... There it is. There's oh, yeah. the Mimic, yeah. So I think this is pretty dangerous now against Mr. Dan's. We'll have to see what his answer is. He has 180 gold. It looks like he's just going for Gargoyle Spam, which is probably his best hope. I just don't think it's going to be enough. The Mimic's going to chew through that Green Devil really quickly. And then his squishy ranged units, they're just going to collapse afterwards. Yeah, I think we might yeah, end up seeing a really big leak here from, from Mr. Dan's. I mean, we can still, or at least King can still hope to snipe out the Mimic. Which is rather uncommon, I'd say, since he won't get to target it. Like, yeah, unless true. he's got godlike positioning. And that mimic, I mean, initially it's not that big of a deal, but since we consider that thing has no frontline except for his green devils and his god, yeah, and everything else the is mimic squishy. is just absolutely perfect for that, right? Yeah. It's, and it's, look at this—it's yeah, just—it's on top of his squishy range units now. It's getting all of those plus three gold. So not only is he causing a massive leak there, eighty-two percent, but he also gained something like nine or twelve gold for Mister Buzz as well. Really nice send there. And meanwhile, Basti was forced to send. He needed that income. And Buzz, he just holds that easily. Now pushing up to 10 workers. Same for Mr. Piney. These guys, they're off I'm to just, a really I'm good just, start. I'm just going to say it, okay? You look like Yeah, a uh, and Are for sure. Me? I mean, we can see that, that Basti is like up there with, uh, with Piney and Buzz. But King Dance will now be lacking behind quite like to quite a big degree. Yeah, yeah, he was the one who leaked very big. He wasn't even that pushed. Like he didn't have that many more workers Oof. than anyone else. Um, so that's that's that puts uh, uh, Mr. King Dance behind like by a big amount actually. Yeah, and I don't know if you're watching this by the way, but the mimic is just snacking on all of Basti's units in the mid as well. So it's just generated another plus nine for Mr. Buzz. Yeah, that's really really worth it for him. But at least for, for Basti and King Dance, uh, they didn't take King damage from their Mimic, which is also... True, true, true. Like, with yeah. an Immolate King against the Mimic, it's that that could also hurt. Um, so yeah, that's a silver lining least, for sure. At least Basti, like, cleared it out to the best he could. 
Yeah. And if we look here, Mr. Kingdoms is sending his counterattack now. There's a mole, there's two snails, and Piney, he needs to be able to answer this. The Millennium, not the perfect unit on Wave 8 with that impact damage, not doing quite as well against the swift units of the Cobras. Yeah, not just that, because he also has so much value in his masks, it could actually be a problem for him. Yeah. Um, since they get reduced quite to big amount uh, by the mole. Yeah, the mole really hurts the mass DPS. Like, it's insane how much value the mole provides against those. But the Mimic, I mean, the Millennium's picking off the Cobras one by one. Now it gets to focus on the mole. I think he's doing pretty well, honestly. Like, yeah, now the Millennium just things. tanking perfectly. It's just a free hold by Piney. Really, really well played there, Mr. Piney. Especially since he, um, like, his Millennium oh. came for his masks. And oh, yikes, dude. From yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and this was an income send only, by the way. Cannoneer, three dragon turtles. Okay, king send was smaller, but Piney, he hold against the mole. And at the same time, he gets a decent sized leak on Basti with just income units. That's really, really good for Piney and Buzz. Yeah, they're, they're like looking way ahead uh, in this game at the moment. They are. And look it's at King's workers as well. He's still on eight workers here on wave nine because Mr. Buzz is just putting so much pressure on top of him. We saw him get that massive leak on 7, and then he didn't send again until wave 9. Like, Danzy has got the boar here, which is pretty solid for him. But he can um, afford a tier 1 or a cheap unit in front, so... Yeah, exactly, also, exactly. Well, he doesn't have any. I think he's playing YOLO this game because he doesn't have any tier 1 units in his role. No, I'm, I'm rather confident he picked uh, Greed. I'm pretty sure everyone picked Greed. Um, I think he just thought he, he wouldn't need it, he couldn't afford the Gargoyle anyways. Yeah, um, and there's a resend for Basti as well, so he needs to be able to cover because I'm pretty sure King will leak here. Even with the boar, which is a very solid tank on wave 9, so much of his damage is tied up in these ranged units, which are just very, very weak on this wave. It's also worth pointing out that the boar charged into the left side of his split, which was just yeah. uh, three car faces, so... That's a leak again, and it, it just puts King Dance further behind. Yeah, yeah. and he's not going to kill the pack leader either. Oh no, 61% there from Dance. Basti at least is covering, so he's going to be able to clear that up in the mid, I'm pretty sure. His canopy is on really high HP, so I don't expect that to die. Yeah, I think so too, but I mean, King, King Dance did somewhat of a gamble, the basic, basic gamble in my opinion. He didn't push as hard as everyone else. But rather, like, try to stay on value in order to hold the next send and then yeah. push up again. But since he didn't hold it, he just, like, it, it hurts him even more. He's he's behind in income pr by a big amount, actually, because yeah. he didn't push earlier. And he did not hold either, so that's that spells disaster Ooh. for King Dance, honestly. But we have to look at these sends now, though, because there's a Ghost Knight coming out from Basti, and there's a Mole coming out from Dance. Now, Piney, I think... I mean, Piney has a Doomsday Machine here, so so maybe he's just fine. Uh, that's an insane unit to have on Wave 10. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, but Mr. I'm Buzz, just I think say, he okay, should end up leaking there. Like a I mean, to be fair, Mr. Buzz, uh, it really weak. does not matter that much what you send him here, because he won't be able to kill it, since since his Aquas or, or the uh, Fire Elemental and the Rogue Wave do not deal that much damage to yeah. a single target unit, and that is what you need against the King. But it almost exclusively guarantees that you clear out the send. Maybe not against the Ghost Knight, but usually against the Hermit or so. You, you snipe it with the... Uh, One more shot, Doomsday? Yes, he holds. That was so close. Did you see that? Doomsday yeah, cannon on 1% HP. Now, Buzz does leak badly. Obviously, he brings the Ghost Knight very low, but not quite able to kill it. So the percentage is very high. But it's, this is not too bad honestly and now the masks are going to tank the boss which means the doomsday can finish it off look at this is... oh my god I, that is I, I, so I clutch there actually just that targeting on the boss on the masks in mid and now I piney and mr buzz i think they're going for an embargo play bastion king downs as well so we can expect some big wave 13 sends coming out i really do not want to imagine the voice comes that are in King dances and Basti's like communication right now because if you see that you gotta be salty. Let's face it, the the Doomsday survived at at 30 HP uh, instead of dying and um, Piney leaking as well, and then again it clears out the boss that Mr. Bus leaked just because the masks tank for it. That that hurts your like that that tilts you off a bit. 
Yeah, that, that was it was pretty close. Because if the Doomsday didn't get its last shot off, then it would have leaked. The masks would not have been able to clear up the boss's last 800 HP. Um, and instead, not only does he clear his own lane, he's then able to clear all of the units in the mid as well, so there's no king damage taken. A really good series of events there for Mr. Piney and Mr. Buzz. Yeah, and we can see that Piney already, already has a shutdown on him because he, I mean, yeah. he's the one who held everything in the game, I think, for now, or, or maybe a small leak at some point. I'm not so sure, but like he held everything almost exclusively, and he's at 16 workers. Yeah, he he's hasn't, he hasn't leaked a single game. unit. Piney, zero gold loss to leaks. He literally hasn't leaked a single unit all game. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, he's pushing up. He's, he's at the <laughs> highest workers. Yeah, King although Dance. King Dan's is he's playing like... super aggressive, and this is such a classic King Dan's play, by the way. Like he knows he's behind, he knows that he needs to take a risk. So what does he do? Does he does he stay high value and try and hold this end? No, he pushes all of his gold into workers, and he goes on the aggressive. And that's that's just kind of what sets apart uh, like a good player from a great player, right? Like he knows what his win condition is, he knows that he needs to play risky. And sure, like if the, if the other team didn't take embargo. They could probably just win here on 12 with a big send, right? Like, they have 300 plus Mythium on the other side. Um, but he reads the game well, he expects the embargo play, and he takes his chance. And that's a, a really solid read of the game there by Mr. Dan's and Bestie. So let's yeah, see if it pays off. Game, it, with embargo in game, we're looking at a 13 showdown, and King Dance is rolled. Yeah. I mean, he even placed the Millennium here instead of, uh, instead of something like a second four. Yeah, like exactly. That, his, his role with the Zeus and the Daphnis, it, it, it's insane against 13. He can focus down these these golems so efficiently and that even though like he pushed up like hell and he's at rather low value compared to the others, he might have even a better shot at holding since he's like that that good with his units and he's even got a doomsday here. Yeah, 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 absolutely man, absolutely. I'm not sure about the Ghost Knight here from Mr. Buzz. I mean, I know he's sending it against the Doomsday Machine, but the Daphne's and the Zeus are just going to shred it. The Daphne's yeah, and the Zeus alone are going to... Like, that Ghost Knight's going to melt like butter. Let's just watch the start of this wave here and see how quickly the Ghost Knight dies. And, I mean, we can see it's spawning us in front. It tanks it is. everything initially already, and it's, it's yeah. melting, like, literally Absolutely melting. Absolutely melting. And it's also worth pointing out it's that dead. the Doomsday didn't even focus it. The Doomsday started no, hitting on the No, but the Doomsday has instantly. run forward. It has less range than the other units, and it dies very quickly. So this will be a big leak, actually, from King Dan's. How's Basti doing? Much better. It looks like a hold from Basti. Um, but it's also a hold from Mr. Buzz. It's not... But it's a leak from Piney, and it's a shutdown. That is a, a shutdown. Um, That's a 78% leak and a shutdown, so that does help, actually, quite a lot for Basti and Dan's. But the problem is that um, that uh, Busty won't be able to clear out the, the leads from King Bats, whereas um, Bus should actually clear out. Yeah, but look at the, the yeah, Sovereign. Yeah, just it's easily just, like, holding. That Sovereign is so satisfying to watch. Just the bam, 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 as it kills all of the units in the lane. That just adds like damage to, to Busty's and King Dance's King. And, uh, I mean, it's not that much. No, 5%. I would actually even go as far as to say it paid off for them. Like, yeah. Piney and King Dance leaked about the same amount, uh, which is a trait you always take if you're behind like King Dance is or was. So, actually, I think that this series of events benefited Basti and King Dance. Um, yeah, more than and now Piney they actually have the worker lead. Because Mr. Buzz is only on 18, everybody else is on 20. So this is King Dan's doing King Dan's things all over again. He's super low value. He's pushing the 20 workers. And I guess they probably want to go for a 15 send then. But Mr. Buzz is pretty strong on that wave. I mean, but it's got to be 15. You, you, I don't think any team can afford to gamble to go 16. Um, looking at the other team's like units, I mean, they, they might actually do it. It just depends on how long the wave takes, but I, I think it, the wave should like take forever, right? Since yeah. I mean everyone's clearing it, but rather slowly. So we're looking at sense of about like 350 Mythium post income. So that's a shaman if you skip income. It's uh, a question of whether Piney and Mr. Buzz decide to send here because they might be tempted to go for a 16 send. Because Basti in particular is very strong on wave 15. Oh, everybody's yeah, going for like, a 16 send. Everybody's doing it. Yeah, everyone holding their nerves, which is like that's 
that's actually a good thing because yeah, you, yeah. you really don't want to see like one team sending now whereas the other like doesn't since that that just like would lead to an imbalance which can either win or cost you the game but in most games actually in this situation where it's that close the team that hold, uh, holds their nerves longer wins uh and yeah i think we're looking at a big 16 showdown um just to counter all these like big money investments into doomsday and the healers on the on the bunk but we can see that that bus is always already prepping his Jazora, which he will most likely upgrade and that will be like the uh, ideal tank next wave and yeah i think Busty is not too bad next wave but on the other hand his his damage is magic and impact so it's i mean we'll just see i think but we're looking at everyone and i think that actually the the west side team piney and bus is set up for like a better hold honestly than king dance and and Basti for the moment being. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. And these ends are pretty massive. We've got Kraken from Basti. We've got Pack Leader Mimic from Dan's. We've got the Triple Aura combo from Buzz, and a pack and a Four Eyes from Piney. So Four Eyes very good call because of course Basti's going to have this super high HP Arc Tear going on, um, which he needs to be able to chew through. And this is just the perfect tank on Wave 16, by the way. Not only is it Swift Armor, so it's perfectly tight. But it even has that 25% dodge as well. So the Arc is going to live forever with the Triple Chieftain buff on top of it. Um, I think Bastion's going to hold for a long time. But everybody's values are pretty low compared to the size of the Sen. So I think we might end up with a race here on Wave 16. And worth pointing out if you're looking at the race that King Dances and Dusty's King is not as upgraded as the one from Pine yeah. and Zulas. I mean, it's not the AOE upgrade, which is like insane, especially with the Immolate against 16. But it's like... There is a difference in the upgrades, and like a bit, a slight upgrade um, can save your life. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're looking at, yeah, we're looking at big, big leaks on on Piney. We're looking at a big leak on Mr. Buzz's side. You can look at oh, nice the sovereign, the, the sovereign, full oh, mana, bam, 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 bam. Is it going to be enough? Oh, it can't. Oh, it can't, not you know quite, but it was pretty close. But it doesn't have any aura stack. Yeah. I think the leak on the left side is not lethal. The leak on the right might well be. It's the same number of creeps, but there's a four eyes on the right and the creeps on the left are all much lower HP as well. So let's keep a, a, a close eye on Bastion King Dan's is King. Is it going to be enough to kill them? Uh, and it looks like, it. I mean, the King starts one-shotting the creeps, but it's, it's just oh, going it's too not low. Quite, it's not quite, not quite enough. It's hitting, it's hitting, it's hitting, it's hitting, and we're going below oh, 10, below we're 10. at 8. Oh, they survive. We're stopping at seven. Seven percent. Bastion King Dance, they do resend. Tiny and Mr. Buzz, can you hold this? Can you hold this? They need to be able to. But if we can see the Piney actually does not have. Oh that no, much no, 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 no. Is... Buzz is building oh for 18. They expect the send to come next. Oh, oh this, my god. And this might just King kill Dance's them. Working count. Like, look at King Dance. He's fully uh, pushed. Which is. 58 workers that yeah. might actually oh no I mean, it's all or nothing for king and and basti right now right so and mr well mr buzz has pushed as well and he's shifting 100 gold oh i think this might be the only way they can lose this but i think it's about disaster for them and we can yeah. see a 440 cent by king dance against piney and the 340 yeah. by basti against mr buzz again. and all of his masks are calm because they were tantrumed on the previous that. Kind of a nice aggro split here, though, with his Doomsday Machine surviving there. Oh, but I just don't know if it's enough. Can Piney hold there? Because Buzz definitely can't. That's a massive leak. 91% there. Oh, Piney does hold. He does. I mean, to be fair, Piney has like 4,600 value. Yeah. He's a good 500 value ahead of Basti and a good uh, 1,000 ahead of King. And But can he now hold mid, though? That's the question. And, and oh no, because Buzz is pushing workers. While King Dan's has already gone in for the suicide push. So Buzz needed to be the one who's strong enough to hold on wave 18 because Piney's going to get a massive resend here. But Buzz continues to spend his gold on workers instead. He doesn't need workers because King Dan's has no value. I mean, the funny thing is that uh, Basti's leak here makes it very, very interesting because it yeah. took so long and the minutes at the gate in front of Mr. Buzz's and Piney's King, like they waited forever to pass. Uh, and 
I actually can't really tell who benefits more from like the additional time here, but I think it might actually be Busty and King Dance. Cause yeah, just because King Dance has like... so many workers, right? Yeah, and especially because, I mean, they did not have a chance if the wave would have ended quickly because they would just die next wave to the sand anyways. But with this league, the very, very slow league, actually like the perfect pro league as well by Basti, they might have a chance to like just race down their opponents. Mm -hmm. It's not about holding themselves, but rather about slowing down your wave and like cracking open your opponent faster. The other thing is that Mr. Buzz is really strong on this wave. He has three Phoenixes. He has three fully boosted Orchids. So... Even though his value is very low, he has got very, very strong units for this wave. So we're going to have to see what happens there. Um, Piney, he doesn't quite uh, get a Shaman to go there. It's only going to be a Kraken and a Four Eyes. And how is he going to deal with a 940 send here? Honestly, I mean, Mr. Buzz's units, they're, they're great on the wave, but does it really matter against such a big send with so low value? Hmm. It might... I mean, actually, he might hold. Yeah, he boosted his Orchids. Dan's is already gone. And how is Basti doing? Because it looks like this does come down to a race. Oh, no, never mind. Buzz is just full holding. Even with that value. So, Piney, he leaks big there. 98%. The send from Dan's was overwhelming. But Mr. Buzz, with those units, with the Triple Phoenix, with the Triple Orchid, he just holds here despite being 4.5k value. That is so clutch for them. And Piney and Mr. Buzz, by the way, the underdog story is coming real. They take this game one here. One zero in favor of Buzz and Piney. But I mean, we gotta say, we we looked at this happening really early. I mean, King Dance and Busty, they, they had a nice comeback. But to be honest, in an ideal world, after seeing the early game um, where Piney and Buzz set, them up, uh, set themselves up for success, I mean, that's was honestly a bit to expect uh, to be expected but i mean it was very well played out to be honest yeah. but the more important part in the early game uh, the late game was the early game because they amounted such a huge lead there already yeah and buzz was just punishing king Dan the whole way through the game by the way like he went in with that big wave seven send the mimic which got a, a pretty decent leak on dan's and also of course farming the gold with his mimic he repeated that on nine and then straight into the massive send on 13, which again got a decent sized leak on, on the king. So really solid play there from Piney and Mr. Boz. Great teamwork, taking the game to a victory here on wave 18. And also and it was props close. to them for making it, making it more interesting with the 17 leak. I mean, they got the rock close, honestly. Super close, dude. Super, super close. I even think that Piney and Mr. Boz would almost certainly have won if they sent on wave 17. So that was a, a very yeah. good call there from Bastion Dans. Again, identifying their their outs. So they knew they had like a, a low percent chance to win if they make this exact play with King full pushing. Um, and they damn near did because the King went down to 16%, right? So all it would have taken is a very slightly bigger leak on one of the players and they would have taken the game there on 17. Yeah, but in the end, we gotta admit that it was just an out for them out of a like very bad situation. We. Piney and Buzz like set themselves up to win rather early, and even though the the, the valiant efforts by King Dance and Busty, they were always behind, and they they tried, but they did not succeed. Yeah, exactly, dude, exactly, and really, really solid uh, gameplay from both teams, I think. So, I'm really excited to see this next game. The lobby is up, by the way. Yeah, um, I just can't see it right. Yeah, got it. Everyone's waiting for me. That's like a rather common sight. All right. Okay, so what are you waiting for? Like, what are you looking for in the second match? Do you ex expect to see uh, a lock in maybe or a YOLO or do you hope for a certain Legion spell? Is there anything? Um, I think it's definitely worth keeping an eye on the spells and just bear with me a second because I'm going to make a scoreboard just so that people in the chat can keep track of what's happening. Okay, so we can see that um, actually the, the positions have changed. Now we have Piney sending into King Dance and Mr. Buzz sending into Busty. So they changed up the positions on the side of King Dance and Busty. Um, we'll see whether it suits them better. And we can see regarding spells, we can see a Sorcerer, a Press the Attack and a Uberwork. So we have no real defensive spell and we have two very aggressive spells. So, oh, yeah, the press the attack and the overwork. Like, shut, uh, showdown on 11 or 12. 
Yeah, and Piney has a pretty solid role there. He's got the Butcher Nightmare combo with that potential for Antler Tanks. He's got the Peewee to cover all of the Magic Waves. I think he's looking okay. The one thing he maybe lacks is some Magic Damage with only real Zeus or Pyro outs for that. Uh, Basti, let's have a look at Basti's role. Eh, interesting. Maybe he goes for an Angler play there. And King Dan's, he has... I really like King Dan's role, actually. Very early game, aggressive, focused. He's got the Buzz, the Gargoyle, Windhawk, Serpent. I think a, a pretty nice, aggressive role there that Mr. Dan's has. None of you, I'm kind of surprised to see Basti not go for the angle, because yeah. we know that a Kingpin is like insane on 11 and 12, and I think that that actually are the waves you're looking towards at, uh, at the moment. Uh, but, I mean, actually, we cannot see... a a good answer for 11 or 12 on, on in Basti's role yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Piney, I mean, his role lacks some... So he's got very solid mid-game with the Butcher Nightmare combo, but he does really lack that end-game push, right? So if the game goes super late, I think Piney's role falls off very hard, whereas Dan's and Basti's maybe can scale a little bit better. They have that APS, they have tier 6 units to deal DPS. I think it's okay. Oh, oh no, they went for the snail check again! It didn't work last game and it won't work here either. King Dan's and Basti, that, that gives them a massive edge. And actually, Basti with the crusher opener, he now has the option to go 6 workers and still be able to hold a snail resend on 2. So let's see what, what happens point out because it's not that common to see a bone crusher opener you much rather see the fire archer that also mr buzz utilized oh uh, but he's so he's actually... not he's not pushing he's gonna stay on five workers i don't know about that i think six workers is a must pretty much here yeah, especially since he got a 20 in income so he could have like easily added two bone warriors here and and pushed to six workers yeah but i mean Maybe we don't know the communication. Maybe like King Dance wants to push well. aggressively and wants to risk a leak, and then you can afford to leak as well. But I mean, we can see Basti placing down three Bone Warriors, so that's a guarantee of hold, at least if you position I, it. I don't know if it is, because I think his positioning is not great. I think these two are going to pull half the wave and die quicker than they need to. So I'm not sure. It might be a hold, and they are split tanking perfectly, so that's pretty good for Basti. But they're both dead now, and now this Bone Warrior won't last very long at all. I just don't know. I think it might be close. I think it should always hold. I think that's a study. Um, oh, and King Dan's, he got snailed as well, and he won't hold. So 50% leak there for Mr. Dan's. How is Basti doing? It looks like he did just reach that threshold. So the Crusher now able to out-regen the wave, so that will be a hold from Basti. But will he also be able to hold the whale, uh, the whales that King Dan's leak? I think so, actually. But it's also gonna be close there. I mean, he needs to kill the first whale, like which is most likely gonna be. Well, he he might actually snipe the low one, so then he. Oh, he went yeah, straight for the yeah. low one. That's an easy yeah, hold then. then. Yeah, easy hold for Mr. Basti. So pretty lucky there, able to cover both his own lane and the leak in the mid. Both Dan's and Basti now on six workers each. And they, they've got quite a lot of Mythium saved up. Look at this, 71, 75. Are they going to go three or are they going to save? No, it's double brutes. Okay. And it's actually not, I mean, I think at that point you might even commit to a four, but I'm not, no, we can see the Nightmare, so no, it's, it's totally yeah. three cent. And I uh, think that... Buzz is going for a Crusher in the split. So I think if Brute goes left, the Crusher can quite easily tank the half of the wave that goes right. Um, but, but then the fire watch is going to die really quickly. Yeah. So I think it's... I think they might Ooh. run into like big problems there. Oh, we can see the brute well, Buzz, Buzz up actually this. sends a, um, a brute of his own, by the way. So this bone crusher might not be very long for this world in Basti's lane either. Oh, look at oh, this, he's, though. He's sniping the brute. He's Immediately sniping the, brute. sniping the brute. Can the crusher die like, first? Kill it, you know. Yeah, he, he, oh, that crusher. Like, the Crusher survives. Okay, that's an easy hold for Basti. So let's go check out some other lanes because Piney leaks 56%, Mr. Boz leaks 50 There's two full HP Brutes reaching the King. This is serious damage. Okay, never mind. Basti, he did leak. It was only 44% though. And Mr. King Dance, he will cover that. So let's and check this damage on the left side. And that's huge. It's two, 
two brutes whittling away at the king oh. and they're slowing down its attack and that's so stuff. much damage on wave three so much damage look at that below 50 percent just from one leak 47 percent they end up on and they're not even the worker league like piney and bus are no. on six workers each whereas king is at eight and bus is at seven yeah so. insane dude i think king dens and basti they are taking no prisoners in game number two they want to bring this series to a one one they want it to be a full best of three and by god it looks like they're going to achieve it because they are really far ahead already in this game and we can see like the early game oriented roles of King Dance and Busty for now at least. I mean, I wouldn't even say that Busty has an early game oriented role, but he's he has a very solid early game with his bone crushers that can be uh, bone warriors that can be utilized in multiple ways. And like the more early game focused role on King Dance's side actually is paying off since last game they fell behind in the early game, whereas now they're like in a prime position to take the game with the enemy king already below 50 h uh, 50 percent HP. Yeah. Yeah. And they have the worker lead, they have the Incon lead, obviously they have the massive King HP lead. So King Dan's and Basti, they don't really need to take any more risks in this game. They can just yeah, cruise control, Incon send, yeah, and I mean, just I keep their advantage right growing. Point. Yeah. Because, I mean, if the the best out usual in the situation, just generally speaking, for Piney and Bus is a rather long save. Like, not like match their income send, but rather go for a longer save. Yeah, which they are doing, they are doing this. Yeah, and, and King Dance and Busty, I mean, King Dance is sending a Brute, whereas Busty is sending a Dino, so they're going for the, the bonus income. Not necessarily going for to break their opponent, but rather, like, increasing their income steadily, so they can hold the set that if they hold the next big send uh, from Piney and Bust, they are in a very, very, very good uh, situation. Yeah, 100%. They might win the game. 100%. Uh, okay, I thought that Nightmare was suiciding, but it's actually the cat that's losing its HP. The Nightmare's doing okay. I think this still ends up being a leap, though, for Mr. Piney. His Nightmare is not tanking anything, which means it's not using its lifesteal, which means the Butcher dies faster, which means once the Butcher's dead, the Nightmare takes the full focus of the wave, and it just can't out-sustain that with lifesteal. 72% leak from Piney there. And how is Buzz doing? He's doing much better. I think he's either going to full hold or leak only the Brute. I think he's actually holding. He might actually be holding with uh, the magic arrows of the... Yeah. But I mean, it's not even that bad for King and Basti that's slow. I mean, no, no, the Brute has got to win. It's got to win. Yeah, the Brute oh, yeah, actually wins win. this. He's got too much HP. The Fire Archer can't get through that. And this is going to be a ton more damage. They couldn't really afford to take any more. Yeah, and I think like their sentence has to come out rather soon because if they go to like let's say eight, for example, they probably won't reach that. I mean, if yeah. you look at King and Basti, since the wave again was so slow. They already have built up 60 Mythium again, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Piney and Buzz, they've got a ton of Mythium of their own. Like, Piney can send a Mimic here if he wants to. We continue to save. So they, they... Okay, I actually appreciate this from Buzz and Piney because they appreciate the situation that they are in. They know that they're super far behind in the game and they have to go for this kind of Hail Mary play, right? They need to get pretty much a one-hit kill on King Dan's and Basti, because anything else is just not going to be enough. It's They know the economic situation is, is kind of going out of control and snowballing away from them. So they're just going for this all-in play, presumably on wave seven, because I don't think they can afford to go any longer. Yeah, especially not with uh, Basti, like, not sending here. Like, Basti yeah. did not send. King did, but Basti did so. Well, now um, Basti's showing the Millennium, though, so how are they going to be able to break Basti on seven? Yeah, I think they're they have to be looking at 8. I mean, 8 leads you to, like, maybe a Ghost Knight send on 8. Like, you're gonna kill your opponents rather good, but can they afford to? I mean, they're they are already ha having troubles clearing this wave, so what about the next one? And they don't... they can't afford, like, having a gamble, because they're at 27% of King HP, and we can see King Dan sending a Brood, and we can see Bossy sending and two. two yeah. We'll so see whether Piney and Boss hold their nerves. I think send? they have to, actually. They're still saving. They are going for this way they all in play. But you're right, they need to be able to hold these brutes here, and I'm just not sure that they can. And let's face it. Mr. Buzz, he leaked small on five, but he's abysmal on this wave. His only yeah. good unit is the Fire Archer, which will just split off its damage all over the wave. I really and actually, I, I don't like the Trinity Archer on wave seven. I think it just, like you say, it just spreads its damage too thin on the little blobs and it can't actually focus any units to kill them quickly. And we can see a 
uh, veteran being built over the cat just because it's in a split. But yeah. he did get another brute in the split, so it, the veteran will also like go down very, uh, very fast. And I think it spells disaster. And I think we'll we'll see the, the game end here because I think you might be honestly, right, dude. It's looking dire. Oh, oh wait, wait, Ooh, wait, wait, wait! We Mr. are sniping the brute over here. Though. Yeah, look brute is down. Split. Okay, okay. Well, maybe we spoke too soon. I think Bosley's doing pretty well. He looks like a free hold there from him. And even all three of his Fire Arch are still alive. And Piney, actually, he's doing just fine as well. This might end up just being a pro leak from him. Yeah, look at that. 32%. And the honestly... Mythium counts are insane. 280 on Boz, 270 on Piney. And yeah, we can see the Ghost Knight on eight coming out, but I mean, Buzz's, Buzz's split was perfect. He he tanked some on his main, the yeah. Bone Crusher survived forever, and the the one Fire Archer, I think it was this one, this hero there, he tanked the Brute, so yeah, it actually was a very, very sick hold there, and we'll see the big sense coming up by Piney and Buzz, and Piney is going for the, the Ghost Knight, which King honestly does not really have a chance of killing, and no, you can King. see the four eyes on on Buzz's uh, side, and he's sending a four eyes, and if that reaches the king and like starts stacking the up, the four eyes can be... absolutely shred the king. Yeah, one hundred percent, the four eyes can shred the king. And mm -hmm. King Dance and Busty are not upgrading their king. Wow! But their value oh, yeah, is insane. Yeah, they're, they're their value that. is absolutely insane. So King Dance is on eleven hundred value. Basti is on the same with a fully boosted orchid, which will completely shred those cobras. Look at that! Every two shurikens is a dead cobra. Yeah, but. I mean, honestly, the only thing that, that Buzz wants to bring onto the King on uh, uh, King Dancers and Buzz's side is the forest, and that yeah. will reach the King. Like, there is no chance that... that and Dan is leaking side. most of the wave, and Basti is leaking not many wave creeps, but the Four Eyes is a massive threat there. And King Dan's 84% as well. I don't know. I don't know if it's lethal, but it's certainly going to be very, very close to it. Okay, and we can see actually beneficial for uh, Dance and Basti that the wave oh. did not like wait at the gate for, for all of it, but they invested really heavily into AoE upgrades oh. and a lot into single target damage. Yeah, but but they are living, they are surviving, so it's a ton of damage, but they're still on 45%. And not on, only did they survive, but rather they, they are still at a higher health count than the opposing team. Yeah. And I think that right now, what we what we described earlier, like uh, Dance and Basti surviving that the, the one shot, the one punch that that Piney and uh, Piney and Buzz had, is I mean, it's looking better for Dance and Basti. Honestly, I mean they're ahead on workers, they're almost ahead on on income, and they're ahead like ahead massively on value. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And at honestly, the same time, like better. Piney and Buzz, they cannot afford another mistake. Because even a small leak is going to be enough to shave off that last 28% of their King's HP. Especially because they don't have any upgrades. And honestly, Penny, I'm starting to get excited. Because if we look at the builds, no one is bad on, on 10. And every, like the Kings are both solo. I think we, we might see like a big showdown on 11. Or yeah. maybe even 12. But everything's pointing towards that. And we can see King, Dance and Busty pushing up again. So I think they're looking to end the game on 11. And there's only aggressive spells as well. There, there's no real buff. I mean, there's a Sorcerer, okay, but the Sorcerer is not really that steroid that you need to be able to hold a Wave 11 send, right? Yeah, especially, I mean, what unit would you put it on on, on Piney's side? I mean, Piney can go for a for a Pyro, um, uh, a Pyro with Sorcerer, but that's not sufficient to hold a big send there, which yeah. is very, very likely to come out with Overwork or uh, press the attacking game. Mr. Buzz does have uh, Trinity Archers, which are pretty solid Sorcerer choices, but he's going for Boars instead, yeah. I think Actually, we might just end up with a race on 11. Yeah, I think I think we're looking to race, and honestly, yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah. King Dan's, I think, could quite easily have been leaked here on 10. Maybe even Basti as well. I don't know, maybe the guys could have tried for an undercut. No, I don't think so. I mean, there's an Orchid tanking, there's a Dark Mage Millennium in the back line. I, th I don't think you have a chance of, of Leak and Basti here. I think the Mimic might have done the job. And look at Dan's, because he's pretty much leaking to no send. But actually, I think it's beneficial for him. He's not... He's not. Oh, oh no, no. Oh, no, he's... he's shut down as well. Oh, shut down. Yeah. 
There's another 25 gold there going over to the side of Piney and Boz. And everybody sends. We have the double four eyes here from Dan's and Basti. We have the witches and the spam coming out from Piney and Boz. Oh, this is this is just going to be a race. I don't really see either side holding this. And we can see that Basti instantly locked in overwork and King Dan's Same for was Dan's. Like soon to follow. But Piney is going for a press the attack and honestly... I'm sitting here wondering whether someone used the time that they gathered by King Dan's leaking pen to calculate at which point, at which work account it's worth it to go for overwork over press the attack here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's probably pretty close, honestly, when you have 15 workers like Mr. Dan's. Um, but both, he still hasn't selected a spell yet. What's he going to choose? He, he's got to be press the attack. I mean, there's. I don't think we will see a sorcerer ball. Yeah, okay, so it's full press the attack, it's full witch plus spam. But here we've got 340, 380, 340, 360. Uh, Piney and Boz, they do have the higher values. And there is balls as well there for Mr. Boz. So is it just going to be a case of one team managing? I mean, everybody's leaking here, that's a guarantee. But is it going to be a case of one player King? just holding longer? The King, King is actually rather good. Yeah, he Basti's already dead. Uh, King is not holding this. Oh, Boz, so Boz is living a long time there. It's going to be close. Pilot down. Dan's leaks. And I think that's Boz King. leaks. Honestly. Oh, actually, yeah. actually, Boz. Well, this is quite a bit slower. So, is it going to get there fast enough? Everything well, starts walking. Four, they, they have got oh, a few seconds wrong. advantage. This is going to be really close. There's less HP here, but this side starts to attack first. Oh, and who's going to take oh it? I can't tell. Oh, victory! Piney and Buzz, they've just two owed the tournament favourites. Dude, we said anything can happen, and it just did. Wow. Yeah, and I mean, hats off to the to balls you play against eight. I mean. Their balls, I, I imagine they got to be playing sitting and not standing because they wouldn't be able to with that massive of balls to go like for 300 cent on eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloody hell, man. That was that was crazy. Like that game was such a roller coaster up and down. And King Dan's and Basti, they were so far ahead in the early game. They did 53% damage on wave three, dude. The King was down to 26 to on wave five. So do you want me to tell you what won the game? Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Buzz did, with his scent on 8 and on 9. Because he sent two times region, and it's funny because they were down to 26%, and they were on 30% on wave 10, so that means the 5% by which they won the game, they actually regenerated. So, <laughs> so Mr. Buzz has two times or three times um, region upgrades. Over sending a dragon turtle or a snail yeah. actually won them the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be onto something there, dude. And that game was so clutch. I'm I'm really pleased for Piney and Mr. Buzz there. Gutted, of course, for King Dan's and Basti. They probably came into this as the tournament favourites. Um, but there's an upset here. Piney and Mr. Buzz playing absolutely out of their minds. A very well deserved victory here in the first semi final. Really, really and solid play just... there from those two. It's not just them winning a serious best of three, but rather like doing it in a convincing fashion that they yeah. they won the early uh, the first game very convincingly, and they won a second game. I mean, they were behind, but they they made the comeback happen, and they close out the series two to zero, which is rather uncommon, and it's got to be like a big a big motivation boost for them since they lost against King Dan's last uh, tournament in the Shadow Cup. They lost uh, two zero to King Dan's. I mean, with another partner, but they lost, and now they won. So. Uh, I think that's like their their sweet sweet revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was absolutely nutty, man. Absolutely nutty. I I would have said for sure that Dan's and Basti are going to take this game because they were so far ahead in the early game. Um, but Boz and Piney they kept their cool exactly like you said. Like they they didn't feel too scared on wave seven. They didn't spend their Mythium there where Dan's and Basti would almost certainly have been able to hold with their units with their value or at least not leak enough. And then they went for this killer blow on wave eight with the, the Ghost Knight with the four eyes, almost equaling up the king damage there, getting them down to 44%. And then going for this all in wave 11 send. It was a race, it was super close, like there was barely an inch in it between the two teams, but Boz and Piney, they take it.
and they are our first finalist team. So really, really well played to those guys. It really comes down to like there if there is a defensive spell in the game, I think like Bastion King Dance might have a better chance of winning because they would just take that and probably even hold and yeah utilize what they gathered early as advantage. But since there was no def uh, defensive spell, it, it came down to a race and it was a glorious one at that. Yeah, 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 absolutely glorious. It's, it's one hundred percent the right word, dude. Like this, this match was. Pretty insane. You don't often see uh, a comeback like that in a game, uh, especially not against players of King Dan's and Basti's calibre. So really, really props to Piney and Mr. Buzz. They, they deserve this, man. I'm really excited to see them play in the finals now.